I'm going to bring you back to our top story. State officials are taking action ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday as coronavirus infections continue to surge. Omar Villafranca reports. Across the country, a return of scenes from the earliest days of the pandemic. Long lines for testing from Los Angeles to Miami. In Chicago, grocery store shelves were emptied of essentials like toilet paper and cleaning supplies on Monday after the city's stay-at-home advisory went into effect. And each day, a parade of state and local leaders announcing new coronavirus restrictions. This is simply the fastest increase California has seen. California the Governor the Gavin Newsom announced Monday he was pulling an emergency break on California's reopening halting most indoor activities in 41 of the state's 58 counties. In Iowa, the strain on state hospitals led Governor Kim Reynolds to announce a new mask mandate in nearly all indoor spaces and a ban on indoor gatherings of more than 15 people after months of resisting calls to do so. If Iowans don't buy into this, we lose and our health care system will fail and the cost in human life will be high. And after new coronavirus cases jumped 700% in two months, Philadelphia officials announced a six-week ban on indoor dining, gyms, and museums across the city. The consequences to health of not doing it are really bad. It's just been so overwhelming. The virus continues to rip families apart. Bonnie Soria Nahara of El Paso lost six family members to COVID-19, including both her parents. Then even an hour had passed when they tell me your mother just passed away when I get a call and say, we're about to put your dad on a ventilator. Nahara also lost an uncle, two aunts, and a cousin. She says watching her mother celebrate her final birthday a year ago is bittersweet. I love seeing the videos because I love seeing her face. It makes me so mad that I am never going to have the opportunity that our kids, that our family is never going to have the opportunity to have another birthday celebration. So Omar standing by in El Paso, Texas. Uh, we want to bring him now to talk more about this situation. Omar, your piece mentioned, you know, how many states and municipalities are implementing new restrictions in light of the case surge. You mentioned uh, where I'm at right now in Philadelphia. Um, a lot of business owners very upset about these changes, but we've actually seen a legal battle over restrictions where you are in El Paso. What measures are in place there and what can you tell us? Well, on that legal battle, the county judge here and in Texas, county judges basically run the county's highest elected official in the area. Uh, the county judge here kind of basically wanted to shut down El Paso, but the state is the one that can dictate that. So the Texas attorney general stepped in and said, no, you cannot do that. So the county had to back off. Now, there is a stay at home measure in place here. Uh, in El Paso, and that basically means that essential businesses can only be at 50% capacity. You have to wear a mask in public places, no gatherings of more than 10 people, and restaurants drive, have to go to drive through after 9 p.m. So those are some of the restrictions, and the county judge here is working with businesses because he wants to do more because the numbers here are surging. Um, you know, we've seen some video out of El Paso that is very reminiscent of the sort of video that we saw at the beginning of this pandemic, say in New York and other places mm -hmm. that were spiking. Uh, inmates moving bodies of COVID-19 victims. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll emphasize that in March, we really didn't know much about this virus. Everything was brand new. Now we know a whole lot more. And so it's particularly heartbreaking to see some of the same things happening again, uh, this tragic history repeating itself. What can you tell us about mm -hmm. that, th those videos and what, we're, what we know is happening in El Paso? Well, what happened here is they were using uh, county uh, inmates to basically move bodies because there are morgue trucks that are here. They had to bring in almost a dozen morgue trucks because when somebody dies, they're running out of space. And there was video of men who were in, you know, striped jumpsuits moving bodies. There was a lot of concern about, do they have the proper training? Do they have proper PPE? Because they're gonna end up going back to a jail and the last thing they want is spreading it in the jail to other inmates. So the county judge has stopped that, but it was raising a lot of concern. The county judge has actually asked for Texas National Guard help to help uh, just with logistics around here.
Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that authorities are sort of wrestling with making a decision about has to do with schools and children. Uh, where I'm from, they decided to shut the schools down, go remote learning. In New York, they're waiting mm -hmm. to see, you know, what the infection rates are like in the community. The American Academy of Pediatrics has released some new numbers about the coronavirus pandemic, its impact on children. What have they found? Uh, some of the numbers are, are quite disturbing, Emory. They're saying that one million U.S. children have been infected to date. That's basically one in every 11 cases in the U.S. since the pandemic started. Something else to keep in mind, we're coming up on the holiday season. College kids are going to be coming back home for the holidays, for Thanksgiving, for Christmas. And the CDC says children and younger people who get the disease can recover faster, but keep in mind, they can spread it just as fast. So something to keep in mind. Yeah, definitely. Omar Villafranca, thank you so much, Omar.